Orca mums are super mums. Resident orcas, such as the southern resident ecotypes, get to live with their offspring their whole lives. Something I'm quite envious of, but it does come at a price to the mother, particularly if they have sons. It is well known that the presence of mum enhances the survival of her offspring, largely from ecological knowledge of where to get their food, which for resident orcas is fish, and also from sharing the food that she catches. A recently published paper has looked at the reproductive cost to orca mums and it is fascinating. The southern resident population is well studied and census data has been gathered annually since 1976. Data from 1982 to 2021 was used to see if females with more surviving offspring would be less likely to successfully reproduce in a given year. The scientists considered a birth successful if a calf survived its first year. Scientists used models to analyse the data and found that providing long-term survival benefits to their sums came at a significant reproductive cost to the orca mums. Basically, if orca females have sons, they are less likely to have more calves. In fact, it was found that sons reduced the annual odds of reproduction by around 70%. This is not the case if the orca mum had daughters. So what are the reasons for this? While the exact reasons are difficult to establish, it is hypothesised that it could be due to the energetic cost of provisioning sons through direct food sharing. Females eventually become independent from their mothers, but males rely heavily on their mums, following them around and accepting food from them well into adulthood. It is well documented that southern resident orcas are known to be struggling to find enough fish to eat, particularly their preferred prey, Chinook salmon, which is endangered. And female reproductive success is highly dependent upon prey availability and their nutritional health. If they are not eating enough because they are sharing their prey with their sons, it may be that they do not have enough energy to sustain a viable pregnancy. To determine if this is the case, then similar models need to be run using data from an ecotype, such as the northern resident population, where their food availability is not as compromised and their numbers are increasing. Prey sharing behaviour is seen in other resident orca ecotypes and researchers believe that this behaviour evolved due to the social structure of the pods. Orcas share their prey with all members of their immediate family, even between adults with fully developed hunting skills. However, adult females shared a greater proportion of their prey than any other age or sex class. It is thought that mothers that frequently share their prey with their offspring are more likely to have their offspring survive and so have a greater lifetime reproductive success, which makes sense. As well as providing the much needed calories for the offspring, it also teaches the youngsters about prey choices and develops their hunting skills. They also found a very interesting fact, which is that post-reproductive females were the only ones to share regularly with adult males, their sons, particularly mature adult males. This could be because mature adult males have a large body size and need a lot of calories, which they may not be able to secure just from their own hunting, and could also be the reason why adult males are less likely to share their prey. They do, however, frequently share with their post-reproductive mothers, which is really sweet. A possible reason for this is that being the wise old orca, they have the social and ecological knowledge that benefits the rest of the matriline, so best to keep mum alive for as long as possible especially as males are more likely to die than their peers once their mum has passed away. Orca mums don't share much of their food with their daughters, they become independent very quickly. The reason why orca mums look after their sons more than their daughters could be because when a daughter reproduces, the calf stays with the pod, thus competing with the rest of the group for food and attention. But a son does not mate within the pod, but with other females from other pods, that they come into contact with. A good way of maintaining genetic diversity, but it also means that if a female wants to pass on her genes to lots of grandchildren without competition for resources, then she needs to invest more energy into her sons than her daughters. The fact that having a son reduces the chances of the orca mum having another calf has enormous implications for the small and shrinking population of southern resident orcas. There are only 73 orcas in the population, 
and as already mentioned, they are struggling due to a lack of their preferred prey, the Chinook salmon. Over the last 50 years, the proportion of mums that have at least one or more surviving sons has varied from less than 30% to nearly 80%, with 63% at the beginning of 2022. Within the southern resident population, females having many sons potentially means a further reduction in the population. They need more daughters, not only so that the mums continue to have calves and increase the overall numbers, but also for those daughters to have calves themselves and perhaps one day become the next matriarch of their pod. Orca females are quite simply amazing and their devotion to their sons lasts a lifetime and extends into their post-reproductive years. Like humans, orcas go through the menopause and can expect to live around 22 years post-reproductive. These post-reproductive females not only provide a survival advantage to their offspring, particularly males, but also to their grandchildren. Orca males are so dependent on their mums that even after a male reaches maturity at around 10 to 13 years of age, males are three times more likely to die the year after their mother's death than their peers. If he is over 30 years of age, his risk of death is more than eight times his peers. Post-reproductive females not only continue to provide food for their sons, but also reduce socially inflicted injuries in their male offspring. Researchers use tooth rake marks, which appear on the skin of the orcas when another animal punches their skin, as evidence of social interactions. The data used was from photographs of fish eating orcas, as the marks could only be from social interaction with other orcas, and not other mammals that could have been their prey. It was found that males had a higher rake density than females, perhaps not surprising. But they also found that males had a lower number of rake density if they had a post-reproductive mother in their social group than if they had a reproductive mother in their social group, or no mother. This difference was not seen in females. It did not matter whether their mothers were post-reproductive or not, they had the same rake density. It also made no difference to either males or females whether they had a post-reproductive grandmother in their social unit or not. It was definitely their mum that was looking out for them. Post-reproductive females exhibit the lowest density rake marks of all age classes, probably because they are much better at avoiding direct physical involvement in conflict. How the post-reproductive mothers go about protecting their sons is unclear but they likely have knowledge and experience that younger reproductive females have not yet acquired. And in some way, they are able to mediate social conflict across their social unit and have the knowledge of other social groups that helps navigate and avoid conflict. This lifelong investment of all commands in their sons is truly amazing. And in many ways, because of the social structure of resident orcas, goes beyond what us females invest in our sons, at least in a Western society. Although I love my sons near me, and we enjoy doing things together, I am pleased that they are independent and can be relied upon to meet their own energy requirements and not to get into fights. But any time you want to come over for dinner, just let me know. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, and share with your like-minded friends. And don't forget to put your notifications on 